Jacob. Um, just tell us when you first got the call about this fight and, and what went through your mind. Was there any doubt? Did you have to ask any questions or was it just straight away, yeah, I'll take it? Yeah, um, well, I, it was a funny one, really. Um, a, a lad called, you know, Kieran Farrell, he got in touch and said, they're looking for an opponent, um, you know, short notice. Um, you're, are you, like, are you ready? I was like, I just thought, uh, I just thought about it and thought, well, I did say I'd, I'm going to go down to Walterway and I just thought, do we, do we really need to take a fight? And I thought, yeah, of course I flipping do. <laughs> I, just, I just sat there and I just thought, I, I started feeling this, like, feeling I thought I could be fighting next week and this, this emotion come over me where I love it. So I just thought, yeah, I love fighting. So that's what I want to do. So I said, I said, yeah, let, let's, let's go for it. And then the MTK got onto it and, and sorted it out within a couple of hours, really. And if all goes your way on Saturday night, you've then got a decision to make once again about whether to stay up at Super Welter because you'd be in line for kind of British title contention if you beat Kieran Conway. Or dropping yeah. down, like you said you were going to previously, to welterweight. Have you thought about what where your long-term future lies? I always I always say it's going to be welterweight. Um, but, like, I, I've, I've been trying to get a fight at welterweight this year. And it's just, it's just like, they've just not come through. And I just want to fight. And I love fighting. So when fights have come available, like, so it's like Kalakmet fight. I was like, yeah, even though it was the weight above and this one presented itself and I thought, yeah, because otherwise I won't be fighting if I'm just waiting for like the right time, the right date. So I'm always, I'm, I'm just always keeping myself in shape, just a bit over the weight. And then, and then this has come. So I thought, yeah, in terms of, in terms of going forward, then I, I probably would like to go down to what weight, fight that bloody Florian Marku or whatever, fight him. Yeah. Little gobby midget. Well, it's good to see someone calling him out rather than the other way around for a change, I suppose. Um, yeah. You, you mentioned your last fight there. You got a lot of praise and respect um, from ex-fighters across social media, everything else, for how gallant you were, how you stayed in there, how durable. But when you get those sort of comments, is it kind of a double-edged sword? Because, yeah, it's nice to be respected, but they're respecting you for being able to take a lot of punishment, which ideally you don't want to do. Well, that's what I mean. Um, someone put to me the other day, he said, you got a worse beating than Dubai. I was like, <laughs> I went, what? Like, I don't know if I, I should take that as a comment, but yeah, all right. But yeah, I know what you're saying. It is like, it's like trying to find a positive where it was just constant negatives. But the other positives, like the fact that I boxed after 16 months out and stuff, maybe, maybe I didn't have to show I was that tough and maybe it should have been me being critical of myself. I should have done a lot more things that maybe... We, Maybe not so much I would have won because he was just too good for me, but I could have shown a lot of... The, the golfing class wouldn't have looked so big if uh, if I did a few things that I should have done. But, yeah, in terms of comments, yeah, I know what you're saying. They are good, but at the same time, I don't want to be, I don't want to be remembered for just, like, a tough a tough lad who's like a punch bag. Like, that's not, not, that's not why I box. <laughs> Great stuff. Well, best of luck, obviously, on Saturday night. Looking forward to the fight. All right, thank you, Danny. Cheers. Thanks, Danny. If we go to Andy from Boxing and Social next, please. Hi, McCauley. How you doing? Hello, you all right? You okay? I'm good, mate. Um, talk to me about kind of your preparations for this. Stepping into such short notice, what makes you so, so confident that you can obviously effectively come up against the odds and overcome them against Kieran on Saturday night because, like I say, it's a short notice fight for yourself? Well, I, after my last fight, I was two days later, I was back running, I was back training, doing my own thing. I probably, apart from sparring, there's probably not much I would have done differently if I knew this fight was coming anyway. So, but I had a few bumps and cuts on my face from my last fight, so sparring weren't really an option anyway. Just a bit of body sparring, a bit of technique, that's it really. But yeah, I'm, my mindset, I'm fit, I'm always ready to go, so that's Start a lockdown, I was thought, and it, you know, people want to fight, people want to do these things. So I thought, I need to be ready and take these opportunities and go looking for opportunities if not coming my way. So that's what I've done. You know what? You know what's done me over? I watched Jorge Masvidal step in against uh, Usman, and I thought that's one bad mother foe. So I thought that, that that's going to be me from now on. So when this opportunity arose, I just thought, you know what? Let, let's do it I'm, I'm here I'm game I'm ready to go I, I don't care I, I, so 
Yeah, I, I can't, I'll, I'm not turning up just to make up the number. I'm turning up to have a, a fight and win, and, and that's it. Talks about the fight then, McCauley, and how, expe- how exactly are you expecting it to play out with Kieran? Well, this is this is my last fight. I, I, I had all these expectations of how he was going to go. I thought he was going to become more on the back foot and stuff and all that, but he didn't. He come straight at me and give it me. And, I, and then it took me a few rounds to adjust, and by that point, he was just he was just knocking me all over. So, but I expect expect. I think Kieran likes a bit of a fight. He likes the box, but I think he, he gets drawn in. So I think we're just gonna we're just gonna we might be a bit cagey at first, but then he's just gonna be bombs gonna start to fire, and we're just both gonna go at it. He seems to be a game kid, so so yeah, I think it's gonna be a war. I honestly do like. The, the, I don't see it being any other way. Much. Do, you, do you feel a pressure to succeed knowing obviously we're in the midst of this pandemic and you know it's been very difficult to get a fight for most fighters um, on various shows but this opportunity for yourself is on the Anthony Joshua undercard Sky pay-per-view a win for yourself here could do career wonders do you feel a pressure to make sure you grasp it with both hands yeah a, a bit yeah yeah, yeah, I do. Like, I'm not going to sit and say I don't feel any pressure. Like, I think I think people are just lying when they say that. But of course, I've, I don't feel a pressure because, as so, but I, I do understand it. Like when I think about it, and I, like I've been in this bloody room all day, and I want to think, wow, I can really just change the whole landscape of my career with this win. So then, I, when it excites me, so it's it, it's good to feel that pressure, and it excites me. So yeah, I, yeah, I, do, I probably do feel the pressure a bit. Yeah. Now, obviously, with one of my colleagues uh, just before me, you mentioned Florian Marku. He's obviously on the card as well. Will you be having a word with him whilst you're in the bubble together? Uh, yeah, of course, mate. Well, I'll say, mate, stop calling out everyone else. Like, after this fight, I'll beat Kieran and then I'll, I'll come down to Weltway, which, uh, which I originally planned to do anyway after my last fight. And we can fight. Listen, I take pride in being one of the only lads around Weltway that uh, doesn't call out Conor Ben. So, <laughs> so I'll call out someone else instead. <laughs> So you call out the guy who's calling out Conor Ben. Yeah, I think <laughs> Conor Ben's got his, uh, he's doing well and he deserves to be where he is. So just leave him to it, leave him to do what he does. And then um, the, the scraps down at the bottom where we're all trying to be up there, we'll, we'll fight out. McCau- McCauley, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. That's my final one. Best of luck on Saturday and I'll hope to speak to you soon, mate. Thank you. Okay, thank you.